Hi. I wanted to update you on my uh, latest project. I'm going to be starting a new project after the Twin Otter. I, uh, if you've seen my previous videos, you've seen the Twin Otter cockpit using three touch monitors to create a virtual cockpit where I can control the airplane and fly it without using a, a mouse or a keyboard. Now the new project I've decided to undertake is a Boeing 737. As it turns out I have kind of a history with this airplane and most of probably over half of the 23,000 plus hours of flying time I have as an airline pilot is in the uh, Boeing 737 starting with the 737-200 and then uh, moving on to the uh, 300, 400 and on. So uh, I thought this would be an interesting project. A, I understand the operation of the airplane so that'll make it a little bit easier than the Twin Otter although it's much more complex. Now I got a picture of the uh, overhead panel you can see here. Uh, what I did was uh, basically try to use this as a reference to measure the size of the different panels that I'm going to make so that this mosaic will fit together and it'll fit perfectly on a uh, 1920 by 1080 monitor, HD monitor, of course in the uh, portrait mode. So I've, uh, I'm going to make the graphics double, double resolution, twice the resolution that would fit perfectly so that when a 4K monitor becomes available to run this, we'll be able to move to a 4K monitor and still have good resolution. Also, I've come to the conclusion that running it on my little 23-inch uh, touch monitor is not going to work. It's going to be too small. So we're probably going to have to upgrade to uh, maybe TVs with some overlays or some other thing. I'm thinking at least 32 and probably 40-inch would be a good size for the overhead panel. I did find uh, some good resources online. I found some nice PDFs that could be printed and used to make overhead panels as a reference. Uh, and I tried to use that as a reference for my first little project here, the first panel that I built. However, um, I'm not sure the quality is exactly what I was hoping for. Let me get rid of this picture and take us to uh, to the overhead and just show you a little bit about this is what I'm going to use is the X737 by EADT uh, the European Development Group uh, the European I think it's European uh, aircraft development team uh, X-Plane de de uh, developer now uh, of course the uh, Twin Otter was for the uh, was designed for the FSX and uh, P3D crowd for prepared and uh, my first ex simming experience was with uh, X-Plane and I still kind of had a fine, have a fond uh, spot in my heart there for X-Plane. I, I really like X-Plane and the way it flies. Uh, you know, it, I think its handling is better. Uh, it has some negatives that, that it's not as, as expandable and it doesn't have quite as many uh, add-ons at this point, but uh, it's coming right along. So I wanted to, to kind of honor the effort that uh, the EADT team put in to uh, to build this freeware, and I said that at freeware 737 that's quite complete and quite detailed. It's definitely a study level sim. I'll give you a view around the cockpit here just to give you an idea of what what it looks like. I'm kind of sitting behind the, in the jump seat area, but uh, pretty darn good modeling, and uh, I can tell you that Benedict Stratman, he's a uh, he was the uh, guy who uh, who I interfaced with as I was on their uh, team for developing the uh, the uh, airplane as a, as a beta tester. Uh, he is a very very much a, a stickler for details and perfection, and I'm sure we'll see continued development. One thing that is still missing is the overhead, the aft overhead panel, and that's something I want to model. So I'm I'm betting that they're going to have that done here before too long judging from the rate at which the airplane had developed in the past. So anyway, what I want to show you now is uh, the work that I'm uh, doing, uh, my kind of my first uh, trial, and that was on the, uh, the pressurization, uh, actually the pneumatic panel, just above the pressurization controller. 
The reason I picked this one is uh, when I was a, uh, first starting flying in the airlines, I was on a 737-200 at Air Florida, and uh, we had uh, th this was the panel that the captain trusted the first officer with at first. There wasn't a whole lot of damage you could do with the uh, the panel. Uh, you know, you could of course shut off the air conditioning pressurization and cause the cabin to start climbing rapidly. But it wasn't something that the captain couldn't kind of reach over there and correct quickly. So, so they kind of trusted us with this. Actually, this whole the whole right side of the of the panel here, the the uh, this uh, the cabin and temperature that was kind of a first officer's job, and then to run the pneumatics and the pressurization controller. Can come with the uh, you can see the gauges there. Those were those were kind of the things that the first officer had on his checklist uh, and his flow. So. They kind of trusted us with that, and um, that was pretty much, uh, oops, that was pretty much what uh, what our job was. So, I thought I would just, in, in memory of that, start off with that as my first trial for a panel. And I'm going to show you what I've been working on here. Now, obviously, it's not perfect. Uh, the graphics, I think, could use some work, but I do have it pretty much uh, coded up now so that it works. I was going to kind of show you how it works. Uh, some of the things. Now, as you know, the pressurization system on the 737, well, whether you know or not, is divided into two halves. The bleeds come off the engines. Here's the number one, the left engine, the right engine, number two engine. And there's a bleed shutoff switch. There's also an APU that attaches to the left side. There's anti-ice off of that pneumatic duct. And then there's an isolation valve that can be opened and closed to close the, the uh, pressure off between the left and the right side. And normally, uh, if everything's working normally, you keep that closed so that those pressures aren't opposing each other. Uh, <clears throat> if you lose an engine, one of the procedures is you turn off the, uh, the pack on the engine or, or the bleed. But if any of these four corner switches, the left pack, right pack, the uh, number two bleed, number one bleed, if any of those are shut off, uh, any one of those or more, the, uh, if you're in auto, which is the center position here, the isolation valve will open to allow that pressure to get to both sides. So you have wing and ice and, and other functions on both sides. So normally uh, that is closed. So, so as you can see here, we're sitting here with idle thrust and we have the left and right needles showing about oh, 18 PSI. And that's pretty normal. Um, if I, uh, what I'm going to do is close the isolation. And by the way, you can see here, I'll just show you, I can control on the simulator and the, of course the air manager panel it responds or vice versa. But I'm going to close that and that isolates the two sides. And I'm going to just going to run up the number one, the left engine. And we'll see the left duct pressure go up. So there's the warning horn because we don't have the flap set for takeoff. Once we get past a certain angle on the throttle lever, we'll get that. Okay, so. That gives you an idea how those duct, uh, even though it looks like there's one needle, there's really two needles there. Uh, they just happen to have the same pressure with the engines running at idle, very close. Now what I'm going to do is, uh, I think I'm going to uh, see if I can start the APU. So I think I want to go here. And the APU to start. We'll go back to the uh, panel that we're on there. <clears throat> I'll show you a few other things. The uh, of course, all these things are controllable on either panel and they respond. There's the recirculation fans that, they're the fans that recirculate the cabin air. When you turn those on, it uh, requires less bleed and gives you better fuel economy. So that's a, a nice feature, although a lot of people feel that when those are operating, the air gets stale and there's a lot of viruses passed around in the, in the cabin. So uh, uh, if oftentimes when we're in long flights, we would turn that, uh, turn the recirc fans off would open the outflow valve and more air from the uh, bleeds would go through the cabin and kind of take take the, some stale air out and then we could turn that back on. We have the uh, and, and we have the uh, wing body overheat. You can see that just press the test and it tests both circuitries left and right and basically that looks for in the ducting from the APU uh, to the butt just to make sure that uh, the duct, pneumatic ducting doesn't have a leak on either side, like with your left or right, coming off the uh, engine bleed into the engine, or, uh, or from the APU into the left side. 
Um, there's a trip reset button, which really won't do anything now unless one of these bleeds, uh, bleeds our uh, bleed lights are turned on. Let me let me turn on the. Uh, see if I can get the uh, the light test on here. And now you can see all the lights on. Do a bleed light. Ram door full open. Ram door full to open on each one on each engine. Uh, pack lights when the air conditioning packs have a failure. Wing body overheat and bleed trips when the bleed trips due to excessive temperature or pressure. Uh, those automatically will shut off and turn the light on. And there's a couple lights, uh, three lights for the pressurization panel, which is below. But I included those in this panel because it just seemed like a good place to draw the line. And uh, those just come on when uh, when you go into manual pressurization or if you have uh, an off-schedule descent. In other words, if you descend uh, before reaching your cruise altitude, it tells you that it's going to, instead of going to the destination altitude, it's going to go back, take the pressurization back to where you took off. And the auto fail is if you have excessive cabin rate or, or temperature. Uh, I guess it's actually excessive cabin altitude or rate or, uh, or power failure. Uh, you get the auto fail light. Doing this from memory, it's been a while, but uh, now the APU is on. I'm going to turn the APU. First, I'm going to turn this bleed off, and I'm going to turn the APU on. Let me turn, get rid of, of those uh, those lights, so they're not on. So I'm going to turn that off, turn the bleed on, and now you can see the left side because the isolation valve is closed here. These two sides are isolated to separate, uh, separated, if you will. And the left side is showing a higher pressure because that's the APU puts out a high pressure about like that all the time when there's no, no considerable loads. Now, if I turn off the pack, uh, we expect that uh, pressure to go up slightly because there's no load. Uh, and if I turn it back to on or high, you see it'll drop even further. So it's very well modeled. Um, if I turn this bleed on while I have the APU bleed turned on, we will have on this left side, which is isolated, we'll have two bleed sources on the same side. And that will turn on the dual bleed light, telling us there's two lead, two, two bleed sources. Now, the problem is there's a one-way check valve on the APU that should stop a high pressure in this ducting from going to the APU. But if that fails and you have high power setting on your engine, you could actually back feed that APU with high pressure, high temperature air, and it would also would restrict uh, the, the airflow off the uh, APU and cause a fire potentially. So that's pretty important. So that's why you have the dual bleed light. And as long as you only have one bleed source, that light will go out. A little bit of delay here. There we go. But if we turn it on, it comes on right away. And we can turn this one off. It looks like it's going off a little quicker there. Um, so basically, this is what I've done so far. I'll probably be tweaking the graphics. I'm going to try to add panels, you know, one at a time until I uh, fill out the whole overhead panel, and then we'll start working on the rest of the airplane. But the goal is eventually, and it may take a little while, to come up with a complete uh, 737NG. As I said, this X737 is a freeware uh, aircraft for uh, X-Plane. There's no reason once we have the graphics done, we can't uh, code them up to just like we do with other X, uh, Air Manager instruments make them work with FSX or prepared or X-Plane. Uh, we could make these panels work with other 737 simulators, including uh, the IXEG would be a good, on the, uh, the X-Plane side, a, right, a really good uh, possibility. Just minor changes between the uh, classic and the NG on the overhead panel, that's for sure. And, uh, and also PMDG is a good possibility. So that's pretty much it. That's what I wanted to show you is what I'm up to here. And uh, I will uh, keep you posted. Watch the videos. And I'll be posting more as I develop more panels or make tweaks. And you can kind of see the progress as we go along. Might even talk a little bit about how to code up some of these instruments if we get a t chance to do that. Uh, it's really not that hard. So thanks for listening and watching. See you next time.